Let's talk about coordinate measuring machines. Coordinate measuring machine is usually shortened to CMM. They're machines that are used to precisely measure parts. We write programs for them, just like a CNC machine. With these particular machines, this is a Zeiss Duramax, we're gonna write the program in a program called Calypso. Now Calypso only works with the Zeiss machines. Zeiss machines only work with Calypso. In this class, we'll write our programs through Citrix using the uh, Calypso build. Now you'll just be simulating it, but you know, you'll see on the screen what the machine should be doing, but I thought I'd go through what the actual machine looks like and some of its key features. First thing I'll mention is our control panel, right? When we load a part up, we've got to move our stylus around to make sure it's not you know, gonna run into anything. We've got a couple buttons here, our red all stop button. We've got these little blinking lights, and I don't know if you can see it, but it's this little unlock button. If we just hold that button down, it lets us move the joysticks. This one controls up down, this one controls left right. So if I just move that up, we can move our stylus out of the way. When we're checking a part manually, say we just need to check the diameter of a hole or something, we can use this to move the stylus manually and pick up enough points to develop whatever feature we're looking for. This button right here controls the speed. So if I turn it way down and move the joystick, it'll move slow. If I speed this up, it'll move way faster. We can also control the speed of the program when you're actually writing the program. So if you want to if you want it to check a certain feature extra slow and then move the stylus out of the way super quick, that can certainly be done. Now, the next thing we have going on in this area is our reference sphere right here. This thing is secured to the table and it's used to locate the styli. Now, we've got a bunch of different types of stylus. They all do can check different features and different uh, different ways. So our first one is called the Master Probe. It's short, it's got a little stone on there. This is used in the very beginning when you set up the machine to locate the position of the reference ball. So it takes a couple minutes. What we do is a special program where it, you drive it onto the ball and it'll just run around and around and around and around and figure out exactly where that ball is. Each machine comes with its own reference ball and the diameter is recorded at the factory. So it's very, very accurate. And it'll pick up any inconsistencies in the stylus system. Say if this stylus wasn't screwed down all the way or there's a piece of dirt in there or something, it'll uh, find that irregularity and then correct for it automatically. The master probe can be used for actual measurement, but we have stylus styli that are a little bit better for most purposes. All the styli live in this carousel. There's a specific way that they go in. The machine can, can automatically drop off a styli and pick up a new one. We also program the machine to drop off a styli, pick up another one in the middle of a program. So sometimes we use this straight down styli to check uh, you know, the holes. Say so a feature like this that's laying down, we can check that hole with that styli. We can check this plane, maybe even this plane. If the part was set up like this, we would need a styli like this to go in there and check that whole feature. So it all just depends on what you need. Now, the styli can be assembled in a ton of different ways. There's all kinds of tips and configurations, and we'll use the stylus builder software to achieve that. Whenever you build a new styli and put it in the styli carousel, it's gotta be qualified. So the machine will take the styli out, it'll go to the reference ball, or you'll tell it to go to the reference ball, and it'll run through a program where it figures out the, the exact dimensions of that stylus and calibrates it. So one really important thing with this, this system is called the alignment. You're telling the system where the part is and where you want the measurements to come from. So where the origin for the measurements is. After you get the alignment done, 
it'll do that for every single part that you put on here. So if you put the part in basically the same place, so in this case, I've got three little dots right here. So if I need to check another one of these, I just slide it into those three dots. The probe, when I run the program, will come in. It'll make sure this part is where it should be before it runs the real program and scans. So this machine is set up to do scanning. So it's not just going to take points. It'll drop and then slowly move across the part, taking a whole ton of individual packets of information. We can train the stylus to go in certain areas or directions. So if you're checking a flat surface, you might want it to just you know, go around the part one time. You might want it to zigzag. It just depends on the tolerances you have going on. So I have a program loaded up. It's going to check three planes and the hole in the middle of this part. So right now it's scanning. It drops down and it's going through a path that I've already programmed in to get a good bit of that top plane. So this plane right here is going to locate it in the Z axis. So it knows where it is up and down. This next plane on this side is going to locate the part in the Y axis. So this way, and the next plane will locate it in this direction. After those three planes have been scanned, I've got an origin for my measurements and you can see it over in this screen. It's the intersection of those three planes. Now it doesn't always have to be three planes. It could be plane, a combination of planes or holes or even other shapes. Right now it's going to check that hole. I programmed it to check it in, in a couple places so it'll get a cylinder. If you just check a hole with uh, a couple points or one time around, the best you can get is a circle. You have to check two different uh, circles on every hole to get the axis of that hole. When it finishes, it'll spit out a inspection report depending on which features I told it to look for.